What is going on everyone? It's Mark and I'm back with another Final Cut Pro tutorial for you guys. In this week's video, we're gonna do something um, that I think is super cool. If you guys are like me, and I'm guessing you are, you probably are a fan of John Olson's vlogs. Um, I watch them pretty much every time he uploads them. And when he was posting daily videos, I was pretty much watching it every single morning. Um, recently with Benjamin Ortega, his new editor, um, there's a few effects that I've seen that are really cool and they're actually not that hard to do, but they give a really cool effect. The one that we're going to cover today is this sort of super um, smooth zoom where it looks like it's going from a wide shot into a tighter shot, um, but it's perfectly centered in the clip. Um, this is really good um, just because it gives a better effect than some of the other smooth zoom, zoom transitions because this is more of an effect than a transition per se. So I'm going to show you guys an example and then we can just talk about it a little bit more. So you guys saw that, and if we almost go down to quarter speed, um, you'll notice that it's pretty much perfectly centered um, throughout the whole clip. So I actually did a sort of cheated way of doing this that you guys saw in the intro that I think works really well. So let's just watch this one more time at slow quarter speed. So if you guys looked at it there, it's almost like the shot doesn't actually cut between two shots. It's just like a perfectly smooth zoom. So you're able to accomplish this by using um, a zoom lens, which all of us have. Usually your kit lens on your camera is gonna have some sort of zoom capability, um, unlike some of the prime lenses that you have. And basically we can speed ramp that transition um, to create this effect. But before I get into this tutorial, I need to give a special thank you to Videoblocks, who is the sponsor of today's video. Um, there are a fantastic utility for um, stock video footage. If you ever need footage, um, say you went on a trip and you really wanted to get a time lapse or a hype lapse that you can get, search it on Videoblocks and you'll be able to download it from there, um, which is a super handy um, uh, resource. So uh, Videoblocks are actually giving away seven free days of stock footage so you, everyone can try it out and get access to their massive video library and royalty-free licenses. So, so when you enroll for Videoblocks, um, all the content is commission-free, um, which means, or royalty-free, so you guys don't have to pay for any of it, and you can use it in all your own personal videos. And what's amazing about Videoblocks is they're the only contributor that gives 100% of the commission back to the artist. So if you guys are interested, you can also upload your footage to Videoblocks, and you can actually use it as a resource to make money. And what I like about Videoblocks is they're one of the fastest growing and largest stock video libraries with over 3 million videos, After Effects, and motion backgrounds. So if you guys are interested, I will have a link in the description to go to videoblocks.com slash YouTube and you guys can enroll in your free 7-day trial. So if we hop back into Final Cut and get this tutorial started, I have a clip here and this is what we're going to use as an example. Um, this is from Vancouver last weekend when I was there. And if you'll notice, we're going to be doing a zoom out, but we can also be doing a zoom in as well. So that is the recorded clip that I have. So basically I started at a zoomed in position. Um, this lens goes from 18 to 105, but in this, I think I was about 50. So usually a kit lens is 18 to 50. So that's sort of what I started off as. And then I quickly zoomed out into a wide shot just like this. So for this example, I'm just gonna reverse the clip so that we can get the zoom in instead of the zoom out effect that we saw in John Olson's example. So if you reverse this, and then as you notice, I added two markers to this clip. One is when it starts to zoom in. So notice if we pan forward here, it starts to zoom in. And then once we get to this marker, Oops. And then if we just go over, I'll just bump it over with the arrow. And if you hit M again, we can add another marker. So those are gonna be our two markers for this effect. Just delete that marker. So this is super simple. And all you guys have to do is add a speed ramp into this shot. So if we have our retime editor open by hitting Command R, Close that, open that again, and hit Shift B. 
and then go over to our other marker and we're going to hit shift B once again. So depending on how fast you are able to zoom in, on my lens I have a power zoom feature which is really handy on yours, it might just be a manual zoom. So depending on how fast you zoom uh, will affect how fast that you have to alter the speed ramp transition by. So for my example, um, 800 times or 8,000 times, I think it is, is good enough. Um, for it's 800 times. So then what we're going to do is we're going to drag in these to make the effect much more dramatic. So it happens a lot smoother. Just like so. So as you notice, if we click on this, we have a second seven frame um, transition. So it's going to happen pretty fast, um, but that's going to make it sort of appear more smooth than it is. So we're going to let this render through quickly, and you can see what it looks like after we have speed ramped it. Then we're going to do some other things after to make it even more seamless. Okay, so now the last letter rendered through. I'm just going to play it for you guys so you can see what it looks like right now. So that happens pretty quickly, um, and it looks a little bit jittery. It just doesn't happen as naturally. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a motion blur effect on top of this clip. If you guys have watched some of my other videos, I have created these motion blur effects that you can add to your clip. And these are really handy to add that sort of natural motion blur that you can get in After Effects or Premiere Pro. So they're only a dollar. I'll have the link in the description if you are interested. And if you head over to Final Cut Pro, these are going to be in your effects. They're not like an overlay. And then I have MW motion blur effect. And if we scroll down, I was using motion blur number six. So if you drag that over your entire clip, it's going to render through. And this is really going to add that natural motion blur that we're looking for. So we'll let this render through, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. So now that that is rendered through, look how much more smooth this looks once the motion blur has been applied. So that is the effect. As you can tell, this isn't too much of a zoom. It would be nicer if I zoomed in a little bit more. But you could also keyframe your clip and crop that in even more, especially if you shot in 4K. You could crop this in to about 200% and then get a shot like that, which would be much more similar to what Benjamin Ortega is doing. But I've already said that. And then once you add a little bit of color correction to it, you're going to have a sweet clip just like this. So if you guys appreciate this video, please leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what video you guys want to see next, if there are any tutorials or effects of transitions, um, stuff like that that you want to see, let me know, either for Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. But thank you guys so much for all the support as always, and I'll see you guys next time.